if you want to love Trump, love him. Exactly. Go to the rallies, mm -hmm. buy the sneakers. You want to give him absolute power? You want him to be the leader Uber Alice? You want him to have the right of kings? You do you. But stop framing it as patriotism. Because the one thing you cannot say is that Donald Trump is following the tradition of the founders. He is advocating for complete and total presidential immunity. Have you liked? Have you subscribed? At the end of the video, will you share? You don't have to wait till the end. You could share right now. Are you going to make a comment, good or bad? I need all those things to grow. The goal here is to build a major immigrant African media outlet that you could count on. You can trust me for one thing. It's going to be bold. It's going to be in your face. But I'm not going to lie. And there's not going to be any fake news. I need you. And I know you'll help. Folks, Trump is not all you make him out to be into the details. I want to tell you that if you're watching this video today, I don't know how long it's going to be at the end. 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever. If you miss a second, you miss a lot. Hello, everybody. Once again, this is Fred Wonko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with a special edition of Bull Talk on Allen TV. And as usual, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you are around the world. Folks, I'm going to talk to you from my heart today. I promised you that this Sunday episode is going to be a very special one. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. But let me start out. By thanking God that I live in the United States of America. Why do I say this? Every one of you who have followed my TV show, Bull Talk on Allen TV, knows that I say things that are extremely bold. The kind of things I cannot set up in Nigeria, especially in Lagos or Abuja or Were, in Imo State, where we now have a bigger dictator mm -hmm. than Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Hopo Zodemwa. If I say the same things I say about Donald Trump, in my country, Nigeria, especially in Lagos, Abuja, or Were. If I say those same things about Hopo Ozodema, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, or any of the freaks that run around as leaders in Nigeria, I don't think I'll be in jail. I think I'll be dead. As much as I don't like Donald Trump and his ways, thank God Donald Trump is an American. As extreme as Donald Trump seems, I can still say the things I say about Donald Trump, which are all true, and walk around on the streets of America even alongside Donald Trump supporters. I may be heckled, but I wouldn't be killed. That is something we must not take for granted. And that's why it's critical that if you haven't voted yet, you can still vote even today and tomorrow before election day. I don't want to tell you who to vote for. At this stage, it's late. But vote and let your conscience 
be your judge. And for Africans who are going to be voting in this election, I want you to remember one thing by playing you this short clip of Kamala Harris the day she received the call from President Biden that he was not going to run and that he was going to give her his support to run against Donald Trump. There's an African connection to that day and that phone call. There's a Nigerian, a direct Nigerian connection to that phone call. There is a direct connection to a town in Anambra State called Nemo to that phone call. I say this because of all the MAGA immigrant Africans who in their tomfoolery say they are going to vote for Donald Trump. Charity begins at home. Kamala Harris is a super qualified American to lead the world. But Kamala Harris has direct ties to Nemo in Anambra State. And one of the people who spent the night in Kamala Harris's house and happened to be there when President Biden called to give her his support is our son, an African son from Nemo. So Kamala Harris's niece, who she helped raise directly, not from a distance, is our daughter. She's our wife. She's our son's wife. Listen to this. When Kamala Harris, as you hear in this video, told her little nieces, go and get your father at a critical point a critical moment in her life. She wanted to talk to her family. When she said, go and get your father to be present, she meant go and get a son of Africa, a son of Nigeria, a son of Anambra, a son Nemo to be at the table when she gathered with her immediate family to thank God for what God had done for her. Listen to this. Oh, you get this phone call and you I guess you can tell who's calling and and <laughs> what does he say? <laughs> So I'll set the scene for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was a Sunday, and our family, my niece, her husband, and their two daughters were staying with us. And I had promised them that Sunday, Auntie was going to make pancakes and bacon, and we right. were going to have a really... Mm -hmm. And, you know, the kids wake up, the girls, they're six and eight, they were at the time, they wake up early. We always wake up the first. Right. So they come knocking on the door, <coughs> and we have our quiet time in the morning, just me and the girls. Right. And so I went to work out and I had on cooking shows and they were asking me, Auntie, what's that ingredient? What's that ingredient? And they're playing while I'm working out. Make breakfast. We sit down. We're having breakfast. And we'd been working on a puzzle. So they want more bacon, got more bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah. And so then we had a puzzle. So we went back up to work on the puzzle. I'm still in my workout clothes. Right. And we're working on the puzzle and the phone rings. Right. So I said, Auntie, you'll be right back. <laughs> and it was the president. And he told me his decision. And I'll tell you, the first thing I asked him is, are you sure? Because mm -hmm. what a big decision. Yeah. yeah. And historic. 
Oh, yeah. And, um, and we talked for a while. Um, meanwhile, I, I went back into the room where the girls were, and I'm like, go get your father! <laughs> <laughs> Because I knew he'd be up somewhere. <laughs> and so we laughed afterwards. Nick is their father. We laughed that Amara, the elder one, right. was kind of like Paul Revere. And Leela, the younger one, was Paul Revere's horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful But, you know, so there were these, it was a real split screen, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And then the rest of the day was, I mean, it was, um, it was surreal. I'll, I'll tell you, honestly, one of the, First people I called was my pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm. I mean, I I needed to talk to God, (laughs) you know, and and, and to pray. Yep. The MAGA Trumpers, the holier than thouers. Did you hear what she said? She needed to talk to God. She needed to pray. But in your propaganda, she's a devil. Listen to what a priest says about you, Magas, and your tomfoolery. Father David here. For you Trump supporters who keep yelling that he is bringing God into our country, that he is supporting spiritual values, and that the other side is demonic, it is beyond stunning that you ignore who this man is, how he has lived his life, what he did during his first term, which was utter chaos, leaving us with a collapsed economy and the greatest unemployment rate since the Great Depression. He spewed nonsense during the COVID epidemic and divided us over ridiculous things like the safety of wearing masks and his suggestion that perhaps we can inject bleach. That is just the most recent stark example of who Donald Trump is, that he secretly sent COVID test kits for the personal use of Putin, of Russia, an adversary to the United States, when he was talking about Americans should be putting bleach in their blood. Think about what this is. Think about this this person who wants to be president again, who secretly is helping out an adversary when the American people are dying by the hundreds every day and in need of relief. And instead, how did he handle it domestically from Americans? He mismanaged the whole thing. This is what keeps me up night. I don't understand how my fellow Americans, I don't even understand how this election is close. And and, and, uh, yes, I'm voting for you. To suggest he's a man of God is itself a blasphemy. He hasn't obviously read a sentence of scripture, nor darkened the door of a church, nor does he have any sense of responsibility to the world at large, only to himself. And so when your great justification now for supporting him is that Ms. Harris responded to hecklers, and therefore she is a devil, And yet on the other side of the ledger, you have nearly every one of Trump's national security people from the first administration warning us of the grave danger he poses with some going so far as to call him fascist. And then you reject that advice by saying these are simply people he fired when in fact the vast majority of them served out their term. I can only conclude that what you really want is permission to be vile, permission to hate your neighbor, permission to put down others. And that is a very sad thing. Jesus commands us to do one thing, love one another, and then mind your own business. We're failing at that. And as a consequence, we are tearing our nation apart. We can do better than this. We are better than this. It's time to take a clear-eyed view of this man and his history and his conduct and reject him. God bless you all. At this stage, could you permit me to use my 
Igbo vernacular and my Yoruba vernacular. Those are the two languages I understand in Nigeria. The Igbo vernacular is Atwalo Omalo Omalo. Atwalo Ofeke, Ofelo Banyanofia. And the Yoruba version is Orabo. Non sofuomo luabi. Oba dinure. Adio dindi. What both mean simply is that you use your teeth to count your tongue. You don't have to say everything to a person who has common sense. You just need to say a few codes to them and they'll decode it. And I'm talking directly at this point to the immigrant African magas. Think about Patrice Lumumba. Think about Sankara in Burkina Faso. Think about what these bigots did to Kwame Nkrumah in Ghana. Think about what these bigots have done across Africa, planning coups to replace legitimate African governments that wanted to fight for the interest of Africa. Closer to home in America, think about the things Donald Trump has said to divide and conquer. And for the MAGA non-ordained, I can even understand their tomfoolery. It bothers me that a lot of our ordained pastors and priests and nuns, reverend sisters, are strongly leaning towards voting for Donald Trump because they say he's against abortion. He's against LGBT. He's against uh, transgender. I am against transgender. I am against LGBT. And I am against some abortion. But the reality is that I'm not God. And I don't judge. I don't hate LGBTs. I don't hate transgender people. In my little non-fanatical way of worshiping, I pray for them. What these ordained Africans need to do is pray for Kamala. Pray for her to find a way to, even though it's a democracy and she supports these things, but to show the Christian part of her and say, I hope it wouldn't be. But if it is, it's not in Kamala's hands. But more importantly, he will say, Onye bie na boko anahachu oke. We're dealing with an existential threat to the democracy we live in. Many of you ordained people who now live in America and leaning towards supporting Donald Trump. Think about this. You live in America and you're getting all the rights you're getting because Black forerunners in this country, the same people Donald Trump want to destroy, forget about the shit who he called Africa. The real people he wants to destroy are the black people in America and the rights their forerunners fought for and died for, which are the rights they won and paved the way for you to come to America whether it's legally or illegally, and convert your status to a permanent resident and then a citizen. 
and now you want to spit on the graves of the forerunning black people in America, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, who was banished from America for fighting to get you here. What you're doing is spitting in their graves. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every ordained African who wants to vote for Donald Trump. You have two days to kneel down and pray to your God. And I hope your God touches your soul to remind you of who you are and remind you of the struggles of Namdi Azikiwe, Awolawa, even Tafa Balewa, Kenneth Kawunda, Mandela. Need I go on? Before I go on, I need to pay some bills. And the only way I pay my bills is because I have sponsors that allow us to keep doing our research and bringing you the programming that we have. Please watch these three major advertisers of mine. And I hope at every opportunity you have, you can reach out to them for the services they provide and see how they can help you. This election is probably going to be determined by women and Republicans who vote for Kamala. Liz Cheney is a leader among those Republicans who are going to vote for Kamala. <clears throat> Here is what Donald Trump advocates would happen to Liz Cheney, an honorable American that is fighting to preserve the American democracy the way we know it, even though she significantly differs with Kamala on a lot of policy issues, but she's willing to put those differences aside and First of all, fight to protect this democracy that we all love so much. But here is the dark whistle that Donald Trump is blowing to his supporters. If things don't go his way on Tuesday, this is the way he wants his MAGA people to handle the rest of us in America, even the powerful like Liz Cheney, listen to him. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send... Uh, Let's send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. Look at this from 30,000 feet. And this is how Donald Trump ends his campaign calling for 
nine rifles aimed at Liz Cheney's face to shoot at her face. This is how Donald Trump is ending his campaign for president. Liz Cheney just posted uh, a response. This is how dictators destroy free nations. They threaten those who speak against them with death. We cannot entrust our country and our freedom to a petty, vindictive, cruel, unstable man who wants to be a tyrant. Hashtag women will not be silenced. Hashtag vote Kamala. Yes, folks, <clears throat> women will not be silenced. And that's a prayer. And let's say amen to that. But even more, because women are the ones who usually take the time to take care of their aging parents. The next clip I'm going to show you is news about what Kamala plans to do to help the generation called the sandwich generation, which is the women who run around with bare barely sandwiches because they don't have time to stop and cook and eat because they are running between taking care of their children and taking care of their parents. Here is what Kamala plans to do for them. And I bring you all these things because in two days, we're going to have a president. I believe it's going to be Kamala, but I'm counting on you to go out and vote and give her that vote to be able to do these things for all of us. Vice President Kamala Harris continues her media blitz today with interviews on The View and The Howard Stern Show. On The View today, Harris saying she wants to help what's called the sandwich generation. These are adults who are taking care of both their parents and their children. Harris is proposing changes to Medicare, saying if she wins in November, she plans to allow Medicare to cover in-home health care. There are so many people in our country who are right in the middle. They're taking care of their kids and they're taking care of their aging parents. Mm -hmm. And it's just almost impossible to do it all. By the way, have you voted? Here is a fellow African, a fellow immigrant African who has done her civic duty. I want to share her 15 second bite with you just so you know that people like you have already voted and you have a civic responsibility to vote don't cost Kamala this election because you feel that your vote wouldn't matter that she already has enough votes every vote counts it's done y'all I voted and I did my research on the judges while I was in the poll. So you can do that. The poll workers will let you do that. And that way I didn't waste my vote. Yay for democracy. Now, let me take one more stab at the MAGA African immigrant and the ordained immigrant African pastors and priests and reverend sisters. Here is what the rest of the world is doing concerning this election if they were given an opportunity to vote which they don't have and you're getting ready to waste your vote on donald trump here is what the rest of the world is doing most of them your fellow christians watch donald trump says the rest of the world is laughing at the united states mr trump you are correct but they're laughing at you there's a site called the world.vote and it allows citizens from other countries to cast a vote as if they were allowed to vote in today's election. Here are the results. 98% of Christian women in Ireland are voting for Vice President Harris. 98% of Christian men in Germany are voting for Vice President Harris. 100% of Christian women in Germany are voting for Vice President Harris. 98% of atheist men in the Netherlands are voting for Vice President Harris. 98% of Christian women in Ireland are voting for Vice President Harris. 96% of atheist men in the UK are voting for Vice President Harris. 98% of atheist men in the Netherlands are voting for Vice President Harris. 
98% of Christian men in Germany are voting for Vice President Harris. Do you see a trend here? Because I can go on. 100% of atheist women in Sweden are voting for Vice President Harris. 100% of Christian women in Germany are voting for Vice President Harris. 89% of Christian men in Ireland are voting for Vice President Harris. 100% of Christian women in Germany are voting for Vice President Harris. I can go on, but I think you catch the drift of it. And finally, once again, I ask you, have you liked my video? Have you shared my video? Are you going to comment on my video, good or bad? And are you going to subscribe to my video? This is major business for me. Realistically, not from a selfish standpoint. I just happen to be doing something I do very well. But I do it to benefit my people. I do it to create a strong voice for my fellow immigrant Africans. In some of your petty minds, you may not see it that way. But for those who see a bigger picture, for those who understand that we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have teachers, we have pastors, we have business people that are doing great things in America, scientists, those are great. But we also need strong, articulate voices to speak on African issues. What we're trying to do here is build a strong media for the immigrant African. What we're trying to do here is build a station where we could bring people in to talk about the things that are important to Africans. What we're trying to do is have equipment that's going to give us an opportunity sometimes for people to call in and agree or disagree with me and we have a dialogue. All these things cost money. We are willing to invest the money, but we also need to build our subscriptions, build our viewership to justify the investment that will go into upgrading the equipment. The ball is in, our, in your court. It's not personal. Sometimes we have to learn how to stop being myopic, myopic and petty. That you disagree with Fred on certain things doesn't mean Fred is your enemy. Just like you're not my enemy. When things are wrong, I say they are wrong, and I don't give a rat's ass who you are, but don't take it personally. When you tell me I'm wrong, I soul search to make corrections. When, when we are going the wrong direction as a community, let's listen to dissenting voices. Many of you who don't like watching my video, it's not because you don't find the video interesting. It's because you feel that I don't agree with the way you're doing things in the community that is not leading our community anywhere. And if that's the reason why you don't want to view the video, so be it. But I have an audience out there. And to that audience that I have, the habits we have as a community is watch and close and move on. The right way to view videos is to watch, give an opinion, like, share, subscribe. Subscriptions don't cost you anything. We can grow this thing, but you can help me grow it. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Fred Wonko coming to you from our studios in Chicago with another edition of Bull Talk on Allen TV. And until next time, good night. And God bless.
Yeah, I'm gonna 